Here are some examples of how to use the Oxford comma, and here's one by Oprah. I believe that all pain is the same, comma, that all of us have had difficulties and challenges, comma, and that our pain is in inverse proportion to how much we were loved as a child. In each of those cases, we use the comma before the last element in the sentence preceding the word and. So the Oxford comma is the comma that appears before the word and in a list. And it sometimes ap appears before or in a list. And it gets its name from the fact that Oxford University Press has required it of its authors for over a century, calling it, quote, the hallmark of OUP house style. It's also known as the serial comma. However, it's optional unless you're writing for Oxford University Press. You don't have to. Whichever you decide, be consistent. And here are some cases in which you really would need an Oxford comma. On the website medium.com in 2014, they wrote this sentence. We invited the strippers, comma, JFK, comma, and Stalin. If you invited three peoples, the strippers, and then the JFK, and then Stalin, they're all separated by the commas. But if you don't use the Oxford comma, we invited the strippers, comma, JFK and Stalin. There are the strippers. A Twitter user says, for teaching me that the Oxford comma resolves ambiguity, comma, I'd like to thank my parents, comma, Sinead O'Connor and the Pope. If you don't have a comma in between Sinead O'Connor and the Pope, then they appear to be the parents. Okay? One more time, the Oxford comma is optional. If you use it, be consistent, but always use it for clarity of meaning.